Hello, welcome to problem six, testing array equality. So here I've made two sample arrays, which are uh, equivalent. They have the same length and the same values. And then we've got this equal method where I give it the two arrays and I'm printing the result. So right now, let's, so let's just run it. Uh, right now, I think it should return true because the arrays are in fact equal. And here it runs and I see true, aha. So I think, aha, this code probably works. Let's try another thing. Let's make this four and let's run it again. Hmm, that's bad. So it prints true even though these are clearly not the same array anymore. So that reveals that this method contains a bug. Um, hopefully if you saw the last video, maybe you should pause it and look and see if you can figure out what the bug is. Um, because I'll give you a hint, it was the same bug as the last video. Uh, for those who didn't, all right, so I'm gonna tell you the answer now. So people who didn't watch the last video, um, or who don't see the bug, the bug, here's what it is. What they're doing is first they test to make sure that the arrays are the same length. Then they loop over every location in the array and they test the corresponding elements. Do they have the same value at the same location? And if the answer is yes, we'll save that into a counter. We'll say, ah, let's remember that they were the same, yes. Otherwise, we'll remember, ah, the answer is no. And then you go on to the next one. And so this sort of repeats and repeats and repeats. Um, finally, when we're done, we return counter. Here's the problem. The problem is, uh, let's think about running it with this test case. The first time through the loop, four does not equal one. So this if statement would be false. And so we'd say false into the counter. If at this time we actually returned what was in the counter, the method would work because equal would return false, which is what we want. What actually happens is we keep looping and we go to the next location and the next location and the next location. And all of the, all of the later locations have the same value. So when we go to the next loop, now all of a sudden this if statement is true because it's a later location and we overwrite the value of counter with true. So that way, by the time we get to the end of the list, counter now th is going to return true, which means that our method's going to say, yep, these two, result these two arrays were equal. But they're only equal because the last thing was equal. All right, so how do you fix this problem? I think, again, the best way to fix this problem is have an if statement that tests for the thing that would be bad and returns immediately if you see the bad thing. So let's do this. Let's say, all right, so I'm looping over the array. Uh, let's say if array one at i doesn't equal array two at i. In other words, if we, see if we see two different numbers at the same location, then I know it's safe to immediately return false because I know that the arrays can't possibly be the same. Um, if I don't see that, then let's keep looping. If I get to the entire end of the loop, then I know it's safe to return true because I never saw two values that were different at the same location. All right, so all right, so now this is bug free. This can be made even a little bit shorter and a little bit nicer. Um, I don't really need this counter and it's generally considered bad coding practice to have lots of sort of for loops inside if statements like nested like this, if you can avoid it. So in order to make the logic simpler, Let's, let's do this. At the very beginning, let's test, again, test for the thing that's bad. So we'll say if array one dot length doesn't equal array two dot length, then there's no sense in looking at the array values because I already know the arrays aren't equal because they're, they're not the same length. So test if they're not the same length, then immediately return false. If we don't return false, then you can, then we don't need this test anymore. So now you can go forwards and you can test all the individual values. Um, here, let's, let's reformat this. So I hope you can see uh, comparing this to the original one, the logic for this one is a little bit more straightforward. Um, and the code is of course bug free, which is the, the main important thing. Uh, so this is my favorite solution to this problem. Okay, cool, let's do the next one. Uh, nope. 